Every IT project has critical points where you can abruptly fail it as a project manager. So let's discuss these vital points, the common reasons for failure and how to avoid them. Make sure to watch until the end as there are three negative scenarios even after the project is fully completed. These issues may have a long-lasting impact on you for years to come. Welcome to this channel, which is an excellent resource for both new and experienced IT project managers. I will be sharing my practical knowledge from real-life projects to help you succeed in your role. The very first failure point is during pre-sales, that's even before you start the project. IT project managers often try to safeguard themselves and don't want to commit to aggressive timelines or projects with uncertainties. As a result, they scare off potential clients by overestimating complexity. So, how do you avoid this failure point and still protect yourself from future stress? Well, you put on your salesperson hat on and sell alternative solutions. So let me explain it. When clients start a project, they envision a particular outcome. However, they often don't realize we can achieve the same business objective with different technical solutions. And these solutions differ in complexity and cost. That's why your objective is not to reject the project or lay out all the complexities and risks. Instead, you must develop alternative solutions and contingency plans to help customers choose the best solution possible. But be careful, the next critical failure point is just around the corner. Right after the client signed the contract, the project team onboards the client into our project management process. And one of the first steps is to dig deeper into the requirements and specifications. Also, you include more subject matter experts in these discussions. And way too often, there is an obvious misalignment between what was promised during the pre-sales phase and what we tell during the initiation phase of the project. But it may get even more complicated if you didn't participate in the pre-sales phase in the first place. That's why you must control narrative that reaches your customers. First, if you have any type of control here, as much as possible you should not make promises during sales phase. Instead, make agreements to investigate, plan, analyze, and come back with a solution that fits the constraints of the project. Second, you should focus this initiation phase on business requirements and needs. Avoid technical discussions with customers unless they are proficient in this domain. Third, ensure continuity in the narrative from the pre-sales phase to the initiation phase. Customers should clearly understand why you ask your questions and how you make corresponding decisions. Because if they lose the thread of conversation, they will either disengage or, in the worst case, they will cancel the project because they lost control. Well, unfortunately, there are no specific tools or techniques here. However, you can try to use a project charter to capture the high-level information and align stakeholders and clients. But in the long run, it boils down to your ability to communicate clearly and consistently and explain technical concepts in simple terms. If you want to learn more about the benefits of the project chart, I'll leave you a link below this video. But now we are getting into a zone of hidden dangers. In the real world, once you have gone over these essential details to kick off the project, the clients tend to place their trust in you. However, this can lead to them stepping back and assuming that you will take care of everything from that point forward. So now you have several weeks or months where it's very hard to fail an IT project. But keep in mind, at the same time you have started using the project's resources. You see, IT projects are mostly agile, so customers expect you to start implementing their product or service from day one. And that's where you accumulate the risks, because the first significant milestone comes, the first tangible deliverable. Imagine customers asking to show the progress as of today. 
you set a demo meeting, and after the presentation, customers say, oh my god, it's not what we expected to get. How could this happen? Oh, here's a more typical case. They will suddenly ask you to give the current version of the application as is. For example, they want to show it to sponsors or investors. What's even worse, usually in Jira it seems like you made good progress, but in the real life the product has so many defects and nothing is fully completed. Well, as a result, clients become very unhappy. I call it the first deliverable effect. It will often dictate how your relationships will develop with these customers. Obviously, you want to wow them, so you need to underpromise and overdeliver. But IT projects don't always go smoothly, so you can't impress customers all the time. That's why in such cases you need to clearly communicate the current state of the product, known risks and problems you are tackling with. Essentially, you should help them make correct decisions based on accurate project status. And by the way, I have a great video on project progress reports, I'll leave you a link in the description as well. But overall, sticking to agile principles and scrum routines helps a lot here. For example, regular demos allow keeping clients engaged and informed. Now, imagine that you passed the first deliverable milestone. Of course, it might not have been perfect, but you survived. But now, if you don't correct customers' expectations or deliver as promised consistently, their dissatisfaction will accumulate. Here's the tricky part that I learned the hard way. I work with clients from around the world. For example, people from the US have little tolerance for dissatisfaction. They will immediately point out what they don't like in our partnership. But clients from Europe, on the other hand, may not complain for years, but they do accumulate that dissatisfaction until it reaches a critical point. And then they'll pour everything out on you in one go. So if you have insights on working with clients from around the world, please share them in the comments below this video. Your wisdom will help a lot other project managers, so please spend two minutes right now to write the comment. Thank you in advance. Ok, remember that this dissatisfaction may come from different aspects of the project. Delays, broken promises, pure communication, inaccurate estimates, maybe misalignment of goals, bad quality and so on. To fix this problem, you need to partner up with customers. You need to build working relationships with them and adapt to their wants and needs in terms of management and communication. That's why don't be too attached to your familiar processes and tools, because sometimes you'll have to make sacrifices and take over the inefficient processes from your clients, but still it will help you build better relationships with them. Alright, the next pitfall is just before the finish line of the project. You see, quite often IT project managers focus so much on creating the product or service that they don't account for efforts required to hand over it to customers or get it to the end users. So you get to the deadline expecting customers to accept the final product easily. However, they start testing it for real and they find defects. Or they ask you to run it by their security department and they found some vulnerabilities. And of course you didn't account for this extra work while customers expected to get a perfect product from the first go. Therefore, you need to communicate all these details upfront. So, for example, you can ask the following questions at the start of the project. Do you have any internal processes which should follow to get the final acceptance? Who is responsible for delivering the product to the marketplace? How are we going to deploy the product to your infrastructure? Do you expect any quality assurance reports? And even if customers don't have any special acceptance criteria, 
I will still propose something from my side, a formal sign-off that will end the project. Alright, and as I promised, here are the most crucial failing points in the IT industry after you finish the project. So here's something that you might not have considered before. Finding a new customer in the IT industry is 10 times harder than selling additional services to existing one. So if a project ends and you release your team and stop all collaboration, it's a failure from multiple standpoints. Instead, you should start developing the next version of the product you have just created. Or you start a brand new product or service, or you can also suggest some additional services like ongoing technical support. You see, at this point, you and your team know so much about the client's business that you can come up with dozens of ideas for them. That's why you must suggest the scope of work for the next project long before you finish your current one. But it's only possible if you provided excellent value to the customers and their business gain something from collaboration with you and your team. However, it's not the only problem you may face after the project. For example, if you developed a poor quality product and customers released it to the market, you should expect them to return with defects you must fix. Most contracts do include clauses about hidden defects identified only after extensive testing on the market. Again, you can imagine that if you release a critical defect to thousands of customers, there will be lots of dissatisfaction and lost business. And also, this post-production support may come back to you after you release the team. So, finding someone who can fix those defects is a really painful process. That's why you must think very, very hard how to identify and fix all the critical defects before you go live with your product. And there is also one more delayed pitfall. So in case you finished all collaborations with your customer, you need to do your due diligence to archive the project properly. Arguably, the most important part is cleaning up all sensitive data from your and your team's computers and cloud storages. For example, imagine you share the wrong file with the wrong person years after completing the project. And it still may be a significant crisis, depending on what information you leaked. As you can imagine, the worst case scenario is leaking sensitive data to competitors of your former clients. Ok, if you watched this video so far, I think you want to become a successful IT project manager. That's why I highly recommend that you watch this video next. It provides real-life examples and helps you to become a world-class project manager. Click this video right now, because I'm waiting for you there.